Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. In this week's video, I want to talk to you about the biggest myth in landscape photography and in particular landscape photography composition and that is negative space. So what's the traditional value say about all this? Well, the traditional definition of negative space is that something in the frame is going to be positive and the rest of it is negative. So let's just look straight at a couple of examples here and decide if indeed this is true. And this is one of the great things about expressive photography as a concept is I want to challenge everything. I want to challenge everything that you think you know about photography, everything I think I know about photography to find out what is true and what we can build a better version of our photography onto. So if I look at this photograph here, this is a classic view from um, the south coast of Iceland uh, with these really, really cool little sea stacks out there on the right hand side. And I think when I took this photograph many years ago now, maybe about 2014 or so, I think I wanted to express expansiveness and scale and all of that type of thing to make this feel really uh, open. So looking at the traditional view of positive and negative space, this would be considered the positive thing and everything else would be negative. So all of this sky, all of this beach, even some of the water there, the big chunk of the left hand side of the frame would be considered negative space. And the first question I want to ask you here and now is this, what's negative about it? <laughs> There's nothing negative about this space my way of approaching things and equally before i get into that what's positive about this the language that we use shapes our photography it shapes our understanding of our photography and the problem is is that people use all these words and all of this language to try and dominate and impress uh, beginner photographers or amateur photographers whatever that word means and what I would prefer to do is say, let's look at this, let's consider the frame as the space. And rather than thinking about things being positive or negative, think about the consequence of the decisions that we make as composers, as artists, as creatives. What choices are we making in this 360 degree world? to create something within the space of a composition, within the space of a frame that we find aesthetically pleasing. What is the purpose of our photography? Is it to create negative things uh, or negative space or positive space? Everything within the frame, the space, is there to be seen and has an impact. The impact of all of this content for want of a better word is positive it's adding to the concept that i wanted to create that i wanted to demonstrate and i wanted to explain and show so all of the content in this frame as far as i'm concerned is positive so i can come in with all sorts of different aspect ratios and create all sorts of different divisions of space the frame the, the way the distribution of the content within the frame and create many, many different interpretations of this uh, scene to have different feel, different expressive qualities. The division of the space isn't between positive and negative. It is the impact of that content on the feel of the overall image. So if I just quickly grab this and create, for example, a square, the distribution of space has changed the expression of the scene has changed, everything has changed. The space isn't negative, it's just adding to the scene in a different way. We can come in with any aspect ratio that we choose to create. And the division of space, again, will change the feel of the photograph. Space isn't negative or positive just because we choose to name it so the impact of every pixel within any composition has consequence. And I think that is what I wanted to get across today. If we look at this second scene, this is uh, obviously from the Gobi Desert. Um, 
This was taken many, many years ago when I was still very much being driven by the concept of foreground, midground, background. And I saw this beautiful little uh, bush, uh, isolated, and the shadow from the early morning sun cast over the scene like this, and the somewhat sensual uh, buttock-like dunes in the top of the frame there, um, I thought that they complemented each other really well. But I don't actually think this photograph works as a photograph because of the division of space. Some of it, <laughs> this is where I'm going to contradict myself, there's a negative impact to the division of space, but it's nothing to do with space being negative or positive. It's the way that the, the geometry of this whole scene is working. If I start looking at a couple of different crops of this scene, and I've done this with just virtual copies, this is the foreground on its own. And I think the division of the space is a way that's creating a very beautiful and simple scene. And if I come in and start to process it, you know, to be uh, more contrasty, perhaps, uh, put it into black and white, and then I can really crank those uh, details, we end up with a scene that just looks um, really classically simple. If, however, we look at the top of the scene, this is another distribution of space. The emptiness in here isn't negative space, it's just space. And I think when we talk about expressive photography, the five triggers of luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere, and geometry, atmosphere is typically space, it's typically low contrast, but it's not negative. The impact of space in this context is always going to be additive. It's always going to sit within the context of the bigger composition. And I think I would urge you to explore the use of space in your frames, not as a positive or negative. What's negative about the space in the first place? It's contributing to the overall aesthetic of the scene. It's super important for us to understand its impact and its consequence, but it's not negative space. Hopefully you found this short little video a cool little primer into the way I like to understand the use of language in my own landscape photography. When we start using words like negative and positive, that is instantly a judgment on the quality and value of that part of the composition. There's nothing negative about space. The language we use is important. Words are important. They shape our attitudes, they shape our beliefs and our values. And if we start using more uh, uh, intimate, expressive, emotional, understanding language, uh, and certainly more positive in terms of our mindset, we will tend to understand our own photography better and we will not fail to make more pure and beautiful aesthetics. This, to me, is the composition that I should have taken uh, when I was in the field there because I've been forced into un trying to force that scene into a foreground, midground and background when in fact that was the scene staring me in the face had I been bold enough at the time. There's two different photographs there, of course, but that is the one that resonates with me the most. The division of space has a positive outcome in, t in terms of how I feel about it. If you want to dive into expressive photography more, please check out our ebooks. Uh, of course, the three expressive photography ebooks of luminosity and contrast, the color of meaning, and ex um, creativity superpowers. And of course, there is the Expressive Photography Forum, which is becoming this incredible hotbed of creativity and expressive photography, where everyone is coming together, sharing this attitude and these uh, positive values into the power of creativity for good. So thank you very much. I'll see you again next week. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the channel. Do the old thumbs up and definitely hit that bell subscription notification. It really, really helps us to get the content out to you when YouTube would rather you didn't see it. So thank you very much for watching. And I'm Alistair Ben. Take care for now. Bye.